morning guys, it's Emily from Doe Deer Nursery. Today is Thursday and I've got two freshly washed kits on my work table ready to begin for the week. On the left is the new Scarlet kit by Bonnie Brown. She's super sweet. She's about a regular newborn size, full arms and legs. I just love the details of this kit. Um, and then on the right is a long sold out limited edition kit. It's the Tanya Sculpt by Gudrun Legler. Um, and I did get this kit second hand and you can see it's not completely blank. Um, the person who owned this kit prior started to do just a tiny bit of work on her and, and then changed their mind. So there's a little bit of creasing and a bit of purple pattern or mottling. You can primarily see it on the back. There goes my oven. Um, this is where it's heaviest, but because I plan on giving this baby hair, whether it be painted or rooted, I'm not too concerned about that being an issue. There's also a bit of creasing and mottling on the limbs, but again, it's nothing too deep. I think as I add more layers, it's pretty much going to fade into the background. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. I'm going to go ahead and neutralize Tanya. I think um, just the natural vinyl color is a little too dark. Uh, and peachy. You can definitely see there's a big difference between the two. So that's what I'm going to work on for probably the next hour or so. This is where I'm at on Scarlet right now. Uh, she did get her initial veining and what I've just completed doing is her first three layers of mottling and I wanted to quickly show you those colors. The first one is kind of a pinky purple color. I already had pre-mixed for my creases. Oh that was another thing she's gotten her initial creasing. Um, and I added a little bit of the magenta 04 just to make it a bit of a brighter color which I really liked. Then I did a true yellow model, and then I did kind of the bricky red model, which is the Bountiful Baby Premixed Warm Blush Color, and I am using the modeling sponges with the smaller holes that are um, more close set. So this is what she's looking like right now. I haven't baked on her modeling yet because I'm still um, waiting for Tanya to finish baking. I'm going to do these same three colors on Tanya. And then I'm going to be doing uh, my next three colors of mottling. I already have about nine different colors picked out for each of these kits. And what I'm planning on doing uh, in the long run is at least two layers of every color. So that'll be at least 18 layers of mottling. Um, and what I also plan on doing is when I do that second round of mottling to use different size uh, mottling sponges to create some variation in texture. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, Scarlet baked and then show you guys where we're at on Tanya. Alright guys, so this is where we're at now. I finished the first three layers of mottling on both kits and now I'm going to be starting the next three layers of mottling here on Tanya. So I've got a much more um, cool toned, true purple, a slightly minty shade of green, and then a teal color. So I'm gonna do those three and then show you the result.
So this is what Tanya has gotten so far in terms of mottling colors. Um, the first three were the pink, purple, yellow, and brick red. And the next three were the true purple, the mint green, and the teal. Um, in addition to the colors she already had on her kit from the previous owner, which was kind of quite a bit of um, a variety of purple tones. And then she's also had feigning, and I think that's where we're at right now. So I'm just waiting for the um, thinning mineral spirits to fully flash off before I get her baked. So for my last round of mottling, I focused on using warm colors. So first we did this kind of kind of dusty rose shade, and then this sort of peachy apricot color. And then lastly, um, a red shade. It looks quite light pink on the sponge because it is a brand new sponge, but it is more of uh, just a pinky toned red, and I did this on both kits. I also used it to start enhancing the color of the lips, eyelids, and ears. So I'm going to bake this on to Tanya. And then both kits are going to get a flesh wash just to sort of tie uh, all these shades together and tone everything down a little bit. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. So I'll see you guys um, again in a couple days when I pick these two back up. Alright guys, so today is Monday and it's painting day two. I'm getting back to both of these sweet kits. Um, this is where we left off on uh, the end of painting day one. I did spend a lot of the day doing uh, neutralizing, especially on Tanya, or really only on Tanya, uh, to get her complexion down to a more creamy neutral shade, and I'm really happy with where she's at right now. She's definitely still more of a pinky color than scarlet, but as you can see, she does look a lot paler and a lot softer. And when I turn around, those big purple splotches that you saw on the back, they're still somewhat visible, but because I continued the mottling patterns, kind of weaving in between those purple splotches, they're a bit more blended now. And as we continue to add more color, they're going to fade even more. So that's where she's at right now. And here's Scarlet. Uh, while she didn't get any neutralizing, she did get lots of um, mottling and veining and just kind of working on building up that complexion, starting some of the creasing, deepening her lip color. So they're both coming along. Uh, today is mostly going to be about warming layers and um, building up blushing, so that's going to be really fun. So the colors I'm going to primarily be using for the blushing and the warming layers are these three. I've got a dusty pink here, um, the warm blush Bountiful Baby color, and then kind of a custom mixture that's a bit of a blend between this um, bright red shade, the lip blush and nail shade, and what I'm going to do as I progress is add a bit more magenta to that color. Um, so this will pretty much be a different color by the time I'm done with it. So really it's going to be more like four shades. Um, here's this color sponge just so you can see more what I'm going for. While I'm not going to use a mottling sponge to apply them, I just wanted to show you the sponges so you can see how these colors really apply. So I've been painting for a couple hours, and this is where we're at right now. I'm just showing you Scarlet because Tanya's over by the oven cooling. Uh, but what I've done in the past several layers is I added both blue and yellow undertones. Um, I tend to do that very early in the process, usually on the first painting day. They're kind of the first few layers. I didn't do that this time, kind of just out of curiosity to see if I like them better in the later layers. 
Honestly, it bothered me not seeing them on right away, so I just went ahead and put them on. Uh, I've also, as you can see, definitely done some blushing and some detailing. So both the hands and feet have more blush tones. Um, I did kind of blushing all over and then blushing in more select areas, which are really the fingertips and around the wrists, but on the elbows and knees. And then on the face, you can see she's got more color to her eyelids. You can see some little capillaries there. Her lips definitely have more color. Um, it's quite tricky on this kit because the lips are so small and don't really have a defined edge. So I'm really just going on how I like the look of the lips. I've also done my favorite little bit, some capillaries up on the forehead. Um, I'll probably add some to the back as well. Even though she will be getting hair eventually, um, I do like to still put lots of detail on the head. So what I'm going to be doing at this point on both kits um, is re-enhancing their creasing because it does tend to sort of fade under the surface after I've done the flesh wash layers and all those things. Um, I'll continue to do some detailing and then maybe a few more rounds of blushing. And I think that's probably... Um, everything we're going to conquer today. I haven't decided yet how much more modeling I'll be doing on these guys. I feel like they have some good realism right now, but I want to enhance that newborn look just a bit. So I'm going to swing you guys over to look at my modeling sponges. Here we go. I've done almost every color you see here. Um, a couple are the same color, just in different size sponges. I think what I'll probably repeat are some of these cooler tones here, and maybe a bit of these warmer tones. We'll see kind of how it feels. I don't want to go too heavy and make it look splotchy, but I definitely want to enhance that newborn baby look. So let's get going. I just took a bit of a late lunch break and I'm getting back to both girls and I'm going to go a little bit experimental right now. I've mixed up a jar of just pure magenta 04 and thinner. I haven't mixed it with any other colors and I do want to try applying it to see what I think of this color just on its own. Because something I've been trying to do with my dolls um, is when I add the blushing I notice it tends to be quite... Um, how do I put this? More of like an orange-red tone overall in the end result, which I really like. But compared to um, like my personal collection doll, Sayla, for example, who is made by another artist, she seems very kind of purpley pink in comparison. So I kind of want to get a little experimental, see if I can go more for that kind of shade with my blushing. And I thought trying this pure magenta might be a nice way to do that. So I'm just picking some up on this, um, what brush is this? It's a shader brush, but I've kind of intentionally fluffed out the end. You can see it's quite um, feathered out looking. There we go. And that's because I like to use this to pounce on the blushing color. So I'm kind of wrapping my arms around the camera. Here, let me move it. So it's more in a functional space for me. Alright, I'm just going to pounce a couple little spots and then go in with a blending brush 
our blending sponge and lightly pounce and blend it out. And you know what? It's really, surprisingly, for such a bright shade, it's going on quite subtle, which I really like. Um, because I think if this went on really bright and bold, it might start to look a little cartoony or a little like playborny, which is nice, but that's not what I'm going for with this doll. Oh, there's a little speck of something. Here we go. And this just gives it a slightly brighter pink color, which I think makes it look very kind of fresh and bright and alive. Ooh, I like this color. Let's apply it to the lips. I'm just kind of roughly putting it on the lips, not using it for any fine detailing, just getting it all over. That is a very pretty color. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and work with this color for my next few layers, enhancing some more blushing on both kits. All right, guys. So today is Thursday, and as you can see, there is a lot going on on my painting table. So on the left here, you may recognize from my previous Week in My Reborn Studio video, is Kylie by Romy Stridum. And he recently found a new mommy, which is very exciting. Um, and she has added on to her order a request for painted hair. So I spent um, several hours yesterday afternoon and evening putting on the base layers. I didn't film it just because it wasn't particularly relevant to the two kits I'm currently working on. And then this morning I have been working on the thickening layers. So he looks super, super handsome. I tried to give him kind of this wispy hairline um, with some thickness and fullness down the center a little bit. You can see it's a little bit darker and fuller at his sideburns as well as around the swirl. And then it kind of fades out to thinness around the area where a baby head would generally kind of rub against the crib and um, be a little bit finer. So I just went ahead and put a varnish layer on him and gave him one bake. He's still a little bit warm, so I'm not quite ready. Oh, sorry for all the background noise. <laughs> I'm not quite ready to give him, oops. There we go. Uh, his second bake. So he's just gonna hang out on the table while I work on these two little girls over here. So I'm sure you guys are now super familiar with these faces. It's um, Scarlett and Tanya. And I'm actually really glad I brought them out along with Kylie because it's helped me reevaluate their coloring and their detail level. Um, what I've been thinking a lot about the past few days is how much um, more mottling and kind of newborn effect I want to give them. I was afraid I was going to take it too far. But when I compare it to Kylie, they're about at the same stage in terms of kind of level of mottling and color. And Kylie is clearly a much bigger and much older baby. So it really does make me feel like I want to do more mottling on these two. Tanya, for several reasons, is looking a bit more heavily mottled. So I'm going to be careful to hold back on her a little bit so it doesn't look too exaggerated. Uh, but that's what I'm going to be working on now. I think I'm going to start with some cool mottling tones and go from there. Hi guys, so it's late Sunday afternoon. I think it's about um, coming up on 3.30. I just got back from a weekend camping trip and I wasn't actually going to get back to these babies until tomorrow on Monday, but I just kind of had a second wind. Um, I'm making myself an iced coffee and I just kind of want to get back to them. And it's perfect timing too, because the lighting is really showing their color very nicely. I feel like they're looking maybe a bit more pigmented on camera, um, whereas their complexion is a bit more subtle in person. But here is Miss Scarlet and Miss Tanya. Where I left off on my last painting day is I did go ahead and do their first layer of varnish. And I kept it very, very thin, um, baked it three times with cooling in between. And I'm going to go ahead and give them a second thin layer of varnish today, just to make sure they're very, very well sealed. 
And then hopefully, if it's not too late, by the time that's all set and cooled, I'll be able to do their glazing and their rooting. So I do want to show you guys what I've currently been using for varnish, as well as how I'm applying it. Um, varnish is probably my biggest like pet peeve, um, and probably the thing I tend to have most issues with with the whole reborn process. Um, but recently what I've been using, and I'm pretty satisfied with it so far, you can see it's totally rubbed off, just that's the nature of things, but it's a look alive medium. I believe it's by Genesis, and this is just regular um, mineral spirit paint thinner by Mona Lisa that I just put into a separate container. So what I've done is I've taken a glob of the look alive, put it on my palette, um, dribbled a pretty good bit of thinner, mixed it up so I have this nice kind of runny consistency. It's not super watery, but it's also not super thick, and I'm just trying to kind of get an even spread on my palette. And then I've just got a regular cosmetic wedge. It's quite porous. Um, it's not super tight. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a bit of this medium and just sort of swiping it on my sponge. I don't want to put too much on. Keep trying to keep it fairly even. And then I'm immediately taking whatever I'm varnishing. Right now I'm doing Scarlet Slim. I'm going to start at the elbow this time just because I started somewhere else on the first round. And I'm just pouncing it on. I'm moving kind of quickly. I'm wanting to get this varnish spread across the entirety of the limb pretty quick because I don't want anything to get too thick. And I figure I'd rather do multiple very, very thin layers and get the finish I want rather than do one thick layer that maybe leaves it chalky. And this is what it looks like right now. You can kind of see it's got some nice texture to it. The texture will soften up a little bit as the thinner flashes off. I'm just going to move this over to my drying rack. I'm going to go ahead and varnish the rest of the limbs and the head. Let them set so that the um, thinner flashes off. And then I'm going to bake it uh, at 270. So all their final artistry work is done. I went ahead and finished their varnish, their glazing, and their rooted lashes. I also went ahead and set magnets in each one of them. And honestly, they just look so super cute. I'm so, so pleased with how they look right now. And I think they're pretty dry, so I'm going to go ahead and get them both assembled. And now, officially, welcome to two little girls, Tanya and Scarlett. So what I didn't really get to show you behind the scenes, what I didn't film, is that I actually ended up um, giving Scarlett a whole other round of varnishing. Because um, unlike Tanya, I felt I wasn't happy with her the texture of her varnish completely. So I went ahead and redid all of her varnishing, so it added in a whole other day's work. But I'm glad I did it because it really made a difference. And now here they are. I just did a bit of a mini photo shoot of Tanya. Let me uncross her little legs here. Now let's take her passy off. And just look at how sweet they are. They are just both so cute. And I hope you love them too and that you enjoyed watching their creation from start to finish. It did take me about a week and a half, um, but that did include a weekend camping trip that kind of interrupted a little bit. But thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye-bye.